Hi, I'm Jason Barnard, the Brand Cert Guy, and in this video, I'll show you how to trigger a knowledge panel with WordLift. Now, who wouldn't want to curate, control, and enhance their presence on search with a knowledge panel? How do you get a knowledge panel? That's the big question. Getting a knowledge panel on Google is not dependent on notoriety or popularity of a brand or a person. It depends on data. Google takes the information it finds on the web about a brand or a person, and it tries to put it all together. The more accurate and consistent the data, the easier it will be for Google to figure out how to put the pieces together and create a perfect knowledge panel. How can you set up WordLift to trigger a knowledge panel? You can do that following this three-step process. Number one, identify the entity home. This is what the knowledge panel for my friend Matteo looks like. To trigger this kind of knowledge panel, Google is looking for an authoritative trusted source to use as a reference point for facts about the brand or the person in this case. We call this an entity home. It's slightly counterintuitive, but Google is looking for an entity home that is owned by the entity itself. It's looking for a clear explanation about you from you. Why? because it can then compare your representation to the others it found around the web. Google calls this reconciliation. The entity home can be the home page of your website or your about us page. The about us page is a better choice for several reasons that I won't go into here, but the home page is okay. Whichever you choose, it's up to you to optimize your entity home. So make life easy for yourself and be sure that the entity home you choose is the one that is linked to the social profiles of the brand or the person. This facilitates your work and also helps Google with understanding and reconciliation. Now let's go back to the SERP. As you can see, Google is showing a short bio and deciding to highlight certain words in bold. How does Google know what description to feature? It identifies the most representative description it can find on the web from a trusted authoritative source. Ideally, it would choose to use the description from your entity home. So the first key tip for your entity home is to write a description that clearly explains who you are, what you do, and which audience you serve. If you look at Matteo's entity home, you can see the exact same short bio we see on his knowledge panel, minus the highlights. That's what you should be looking to achieve for your entity. The second key tip is to add schema.org markup to the entity home. This is helpful because it presents key information in a machine readable format that is Google's native language. If you're talking about a brand, you will use the schema type organization. This will contain factual information about the company, such as founding date, the address, and so on that will help Google to understand which company the page is talking about. If you're talking about a person, you'll use the schema type person. This will contain information about the person, such as birth date, birthplace, honorific suffix, and so on that will help Google understand which person the page is talking about. So how do you add that schema.org structured data to your entity home? It's easy if you've got WordLift. Log into your WordPress dashboard. The part of the admin that we're looking for is the Pages section. Get to the page you want to edit. In this case, it will be the Bio page, but it could also be the Home or the About page. With WordLift, all the structured data connected to your content is easily accessible. Here we go. The first thing you'll see is your content and the WordLift content classification pane that loads the entity suggestions but now we want to scroll down and find a specific feature. Let's look for the entity types pane that is added by WordLift. Once you find that pane, take a look at what entity type has been selected. In this case, it is entity type person. After saving, you can scroll down to the bottom of the content. Now this might take a while for a long page like this bio, but at the bottom of the content, you'll see custom fields where you need to add information about the person you're talking about. Complete the custom fields with the required information. Knows. Here you can add people the person knows and has a close relationship with. Matteo has added Andrea Volpini and myself. 
birth date. WordLift will help you insert the date in the right format. Birthplace. All the birth information is very useful to help Google distinguish you from other people with the same name. Affiliation. This is the organization or the company the person is affiliated to. For example, a school, a university, a club, or a team. Email. This can be helpful for Google to uniquely identify you. Websites. Here you can add links to web pages that are 80% or more about the person, including Wikidata, Wikipedia, Crunchbase, IMDb, and other profile pages, including social media profile pages like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Then you can update the page and you've published all of this information in the form of structured data that Google really loves. Remember that this information in the form of schema structured data is invisible to people who visit the web page. It's included in the code of the web page so that Google and other search engines can read it. Let's see what my friend Matteo did and what his knowledge panel looks like. He has a description from his own website, which is incredibly important and very difficult to achieve. Then he also has some information about his personal life, his birth date, his family. The structured data WordLift provides helps here. And then we see Matteo's social profiles. It's incredibly important that Google gets these right, and it's up to you to ensure that it does. Linking to the correct social profiles from your entity home is vital. Linking back from those social profiles to the entity home is also vital. Going back to the WordPress backend, we can now have a look at an about page where we provide Google with the schema.org structured markup it needs to trigger a knowledge panel. Let's check the entity types pane again. This time, we want to select a different schema type, the entity type organization. After saving, scroll down the page, and after the content of the page, you'll see the custom fields to add your organization's information. All of this information helps Google identify and disambiguate the company. Legal name. Try to match the name you use elsewhere, especially on Google My Business. Founder. Ideally, you'll have already created a page using the person entity type for the founders of the organization. Email. Enter the email that is most prominent on your website. Telephone. Enter the telephone number that is the most prominent on your website. Website. Add here the entity home, so your home page or your about page. Address. You want to use the main address that is used on your website, government websites, and your company profile pages. And remember to use the schema.org way of writing addresses. If you need a reference on how you should fill in in these fields, you can always use the schema.org website that shows all the naming conventions and abbreviations that you're supposed to use, especially for the address part. And there you go. This is your complete organization markup that is associated with your page, your site, and your domain. It tells Google what you want to see in your knowledge panel. This information will now be presented to Google for every piece of content you publish on your website, which is great. Number two, provide confirmation to Google about the brand or the person you're talking about. Let's use my own knowledge panel for the next example. Here's what the SERP looks like when you Google my name. As you can see, the information is positive and accurate, and the description in my knowledge panel comes from my own website, jasonbarnard.com. To achieve something similar to this, you really need to make sure that relevant authoritative sources confirm the information that you provided to Google on your entity home. This means you need to go to every relevant profile page and article about the brand or the person you're talking about and make sure they confirm some or all of the statements you've made on your entity home. This is easy when you have direct control, for example, on your social profiles like Twitter and LinkedIn. It can be more difficult when third parties have written about the person or the company independently, and you need their cooperation. Like this article in the Times of Israel. Obviously, you want to control the sources that you control, but also bear in mind that it's the independent sources that will carry the most weight in Google's evaluation. So spend the time and make the effort to get those sources of corroboration to match. 
everything I just said here in regards to a person applies in the same way to any organization. Number three, create an infinite self-confirming loop. Make sure that all the profiles and articles about your company or the person contain some or all of the facts contained in your entity home and that they link directly back to it. That's a self-confirming loop. In the context of understanding facts about a person or an organization, Google loves that. This is the best way to further corroborate and confirm the information contained in the entity home. Now, add those profiles and articles as same as in your schema markup, person or organization. This is the best way to further corroborate and confirm the information contained in the entity home. For instance, we can see that Matteo lists his Twitter as the same as, and in return, his Twitter is pointing at his entity home. That's very powerful because it creates an infinite loop that serves two purposes. It confirms the information you've provided about the company or the person on the entity home, and it encourages Google to accept your choice of entity home, which means you have the control of the web page it uses as the single most authoritative reference for facts about your entity. As a human, repetition can get annoying. For a machine trying to understand the world, repetition is the one thing it craves. If you complete those three steps well, Google will understand, it will be confident in that understanding, and you will get a knowledge panel. But be warned, getting the knowledge panel takes time, from a month or so to more than a year, so be patient. Let's take a closer look at what we just did behind the scenes with WordLift. We added the structured data to the entity home. Now, this is how it looks on the schema validator tool. As you can see, the markup we find on WordLift is correctly translated in the appropriate schema.org types. We see a person entity, and if we click on it, we can expand all of the properties we added via WordLift. And here is what the knowledge panel looks like on Google SERP, complete with images and the entity home we provided to Google. Matteo has the photo he chose on his entity home in the first place in his knowledge panel, then some other photos from sources he has identified for Google. He also has a description from his own site, so a description he wrote himself, and some information about his birth date and his family. The work he's done through his entity home has helped to ensure that this information is correct and reflects positively on him and his family. He's managing Google's understanding of him and thus what it presents to its users in his knowledge panel. Controlling Google's understanding and presentation of the facts is vital for a person, and arguably even more so for a company. Now, how long does getting a knowledge panel take? I said earlier that a knowledge panel takes time. In truth, that can mean weeks, months, or even a year or more. Now, what affects that timeline? If Google already has sufficient information and corroboration about the person or the entity, and it's simply tr struggling to put the pieces together, then this three-step process will provide Google with a solid authoritative guide on how to put those pieces together. I call this the tipping point. You confirm what Google has already understood and simply reassure it. In this case, your knowledge panel will trigger quickly, probably in three to four weeks. If on the other hand, the information around the web about the brand or the person was contradictory or references in important sources were missing or of poor quality, then even when you get all those three steps right, you can expect it to take about three months for Google to put the pieces together and give you your knowledge panel. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more about how to trigger a knowledge panel, follow me on Twitter, read my articles, or head over to wordlift.io and book a demo with one of their trained SEO experts. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon.